Cool. What's up guys, Nick Rapazzi here. Welcome to the Paradise C6 YouTube channel. Uh, today we're gonna be working on the Corvette. Today we're gonna be getting the fuel system going. I have a drop-in pump from Racetronics. This is a 450 LPH. Basically they take a stock sending unit from a C6 and put their own pump in it. They did have an option for, I think I wanna say a 525, which is, um, it's a Hellcat pump, but it wasn't in stock at the time, and this isn't going to be something that's going to be forever in the car. So this will work perfectly for the horsepower numbers that we're trying to hit, which is right around 700. And um, so same thing with the fuel system. So we have a Aeromotive um, fuel pressure regulator. Uh, we have one side locked off. We're going to go in, out, and I'll show you where the lines are going to be running. And basically, use a stock location. Then this is the fuel line setup. It's all 6 a.m. Got the, this isn't steel braided, it's just uh, nylon braided. I don't really need anything for heat because we're gonna be pretty much avoiding all heat and just following the stock stuff. And this is a, basically a hot wire kit. This is gonna put direct power from the alternator to the pump. So we're always gonna have 13 and a half volts of uh, electricity going straight to the pump and we'll never have a failure at it also um we have both tanks dropped and there's i don't know what i did with it but there, this is a this is one of the big pieces that have to go in it's a block off that goes inside of the passenger side tank that's why we dropped this side this is what's going to block off the regulator so it's still going to flow uh the fuel to the other side of the tank but it's just not going to regulate it and that's why we're going with the standalone, just so we can do a return style system. And that's what this is right here. This is a uh, a return that's added on to this as well. So this way we can control the pressure. When you have too much pressure going to the stock regulator, it doesn't want to flow right. So that's why it's completely changing the whole setup. So I'm going to get a couple things set up, get ready to uh, mount the fuel pressure regulator. So this way we know where we have to run the return line, uh, get the fittings fitted up and then start running lines and putting that into the tank. So I haven't opened up the passenger side just to see where the block off is yet. So I'll open that up with you guys and we'll see where everything goes. So let me get to it and I'll check in with you guys in a little bit. Right, so you saw that was 10 times harder than it needs to be um biggest reason why is this is 15 years old it's been soaking in gas and it probably just swelled up a little bit and that's why I, I had to like almost pry it to get it out hopefully the new one goes in a lot smoother we have a new o-ring somewhere for this right here we got to put these uh little spacers on the bottom so it spaces it off so it doesn't clog up or block off fuel and then uh we'll throw this thing in So we got the pump in it was 10 times harder than it actually needed to be the seal looks like it's in the right spot lock rings in uh we just have to make up the return line and get that kind of ran to where it needs to be i'm going to follow right along with these stock fuel lines and so when we hook that up but next let's get this other side tank over and we'll get the sending unit out and get that block off plate that has to go in here and so let me get this over here and then we'll uh, speed uh, time lapse this thing So we got both in um, that fuel pressure regulator, this piece right here. I, for some reason, I didn't, I didn't see the plastic piece that was holding it in. 
but I, I hope you guys just saw it in the time lapse. So you just pull the, the little plastic piece out, pop this out, pop the new one in. It is a O-ring seal, so it's kind of hard to actually push in. But once you get it popped in, everything goes right back together. That that uh, that's all back. The new pump is in. I probably am gonna end up throwing this tank in because we're pretty much done with this side and get the crossover in. And then I don't want to put that one in until we start getting the return line ran. So this way we can run it right along with the feed. And um, so that's probably what we're gonna do now is uh, get this tank put in, get the, the lines ran, and then start mounting stuff where everything needs to go. So. Let me put you guys down real quick. We'll get this tank back in and then uh, get to it. All right, guys, so getting the crossover... Uh, thing as you guys saw it was a bitch to get everything in so i started laying out the wiring harness and we're gonna take this and there's a ground right here to the body that goes to the uh, gas cap here so i'm gonna take that put this all up so this way we have all the wiring set up for this i'm gonna run the power cable right through here this is the uh like kick panel rocker panel thing on the bottom here and that's gonna go right up into the front fender which will come right through up in here and then we'll just come right up and go to the alternator and mount that up and mount this uh fuse somewhere up here got to be something to bolt it to but uh that's the plan right there i'm not going to film this because it's pretty simple it's just running this through and then once we have that ready we'll pretty much be ready to do the return line and then pop that tank back in. If we can get that done today, I'll be super happy with that. And then we can run all the lines and get everything done. So let me get this in and then I'll check in with you guys when we're putting that in. So what's up guys? So it's the next day here and we left off with me making the lines. I have the uh, O-rings that go inside of the crossover tube right there. Just make sure that nothing leaks. Got to put these in. Um, the line's made so we're ready to just run it through the trans tunnel and um right run it right along the uh torque tube so this way it runs right with the the feed line and then we're going to bring up the return right there so we can hook up the um fuel pressure regulator we got the adapter piece to hook it up to that i actually have to i i went out and got the uh the inlet and the return uh put on already so that that's all ready to go we have the fittings one thing i want to know about these fittings they're different than any other one that i use normally you have to let me take this off. So normally you have to press fit these on, but these are actually threaded on, on the inside. I don't know if you could see it. And these actually thread onto the tube. So that was uh, a little bit different than normal, but um, these went on pretty fairly easy. It, it's much easier using these nylon than it is for the steel braided. And this isn't gonna see any heat, so I'm not really worried about using the nylon for this. So uh, I'm gonna set you guys down. We're gonna get this fuel tank in, get the return line ran to where it needs to. We're gonna cut it and uh, get the fuel pressure regular set, it, set up. So everything will be back in. And I think I'm gonna get the fuel rails, which are right over here. I'm gonna put these on, even though I don't have the new, um, new uh, injectors yet. We're gonna slap the uh, stock ones in with these Holly EFIs. I've had these for a while. This is what I was gonna use for the, the main fuel system, but we're gonna use it now and um, have it set up with the 6 a.m. It's got all the fittings. This is a pretty cool kit. It's got everything ready to go. So let me uh, let me get that tank in, put you guys down, and uh, we'll time lapse it and get everything ran. <laughs> Thank you. 
right guys, so I was running into a bit of trouble with having the exhaust in there and we were running this line right here. It was getting caught up on the center section where the bolts actually go through. So I ended up removing the, the plate that was here, uh, removing the exhaust. I actually cut it because I did order a three and a half V-band just so I can keep this thing serviceable. Because the way the exhaust was, everything fit perfectly, but I couldn't remove the down pipe uh, and separate it from going to the X pipe. So me doing that makes it super simple to get everything pulled out. And I kind of want to see if I can suck that up another half inch because there was still like a half inch, quarter inch gap in between there. So I'm going to try and get it as close as I can. Um, it shouldn't vibrate or anything like that because I'm going to heat wrap it, the whole down pipe and everything that's going across. So hopefully that, that works out good with that. Um, right now I'm just uh, running this line to where I want it to go. I have these half inch like uh, hose clamps circle things and there's bolts. Um, let me show you. So there's bolts right there holding the uh, brake lines and everything like that. And um, let me see if I can do this with one hand and show you. So these actually fit around here perfectly see fit around there perfectly and then the I'll take the bolt out and bolt it right to that so this way it's right on here it's not gonna go anywhere it's not gonna move around and it's away from heat so the, the biggest thing is I don't want these to be near any part of the exhaust and having it tucked up under there and secured to the to the side of the trans tunnel is gonna make it so much easier so I'm gonna get all this stuff ran throw, throw into a quick time lapse get this done and I think that's uh, it's gonna be it for today because we got uh, got to do the fuel rails and all that kind of stuff and line up everything where everything goes so let me get this done and then i'll check in with you guys when we're uh, all finished up guys as you guys can see I didn't end up using the bolts uh, I had to zip tie it up because when I would try to put the bolts in and hold the um, the clamp in place it wasn't letting the nut go down on it so I just ended up zip tying the clamps down to the brackets itself and it seems to be holding them pretty tight I, it's not like this is any high pressure or anything like that so it shouldn't move anywhere shouldn't go anywhere and it's tucked out of, out of place and it's not going to rub up against anything that's moving and stay away from anything that has some heat thrown at it. So it's super cool that everything's in here and ready to go. Um, the only thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to do it off camera. I'm just going to put the um, cover that holds up this side fuel tank just so I don't have to leave the jack under it overnight. And then uh, let me show you guys where everything's coming out. So we have the, the hose coming up right here, right next to the actual feed. So this way everything will be fairly simple. I'll put the fuel pressure regulator probably somewhere in this area. Uh, I'd have to figure out where I, I'm gonna actually mount it because I do wanna be able to adjust it and be able to check it to see what the fuel pressure is uh, on this as well. So that'll be something that we'll do tomorrow and uh, finalize the actual fuel rails and everything like that because it is getting kind of late here. So. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. There will be a part two uh, going over everything and finishing all that. And then once the fuel system's done, we just have to do the cold side, put the new injectors in, and we are all set and ready for dyno. So very, very soon, I'm, I'm guessing maybe another week or two and we'll be ready to go and then we get back to the Datsun project too. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to smash the subscribe button if you have any questions whatsoever on anything that I've used, where I got anything, or how the setup's going or anything like that. Drop a comment down below, and I'll answer anything you guys have. But hope you guys are having a good week, and I'll talk to you all later. Peace.